Today I'm going to be talking about how to adjust uh, sick leave and, and uh, vacation hours in Sage 50's payroll. Um, this used to be a fairly uncommon question that I would get, but now that several states have enacted mandatory sick leave laws, it's uh, become a, a, a pretty common issue. In uh, most of these states, it seems like they don't allow you to limit how many sick hours an employee can accrue, but they do let you limit how many hours they can carry over into the new year. And if we look at the payroll settings here in Sage 50, we can see there's a choice that says, does the remaining time carry over to the next year? And it's just yes or no. So it, it's an all or nothing question. You can't say yes, but only 40 hours or something like that. Um, so you can change that setting here, but you can't set a limit. Also, I'll just mention that um, if you have set up hourly sick leave accrual like uh, most people in those states have, have done, this should show my formulas, not the answers to the questions below. If you go through and change the answers to these questions, um, you will rewrite your formula, so be very careful of that. So I'm going to cancel that, and we're going to talk about how to go about um, adjusting your balances. Um, well, so the first thing you need to, to do is find out whose balances need to be adjusted. So typically, um, well, you could use the last um, the last pay stub of the year, or if you go into reports and forms and then payroll, you see we have a vacation and sick time report. And I'm going to set that to show totals only. I've just got three employees in this little test company here. And you can see that the first employee, Al, is, uh, has 26 and a half hours. Um, so we're going to assume that, that we're going to let employees carry over 40 hours in the new year. So Al does not need an adjustment. Polly has 50 hours, so she needs an adjustment. And Shander has 44.83 hours, so she will also need an adjustment. So we'll close that report and go back to the main window. We'll go to Tasks and Payroll Entry. And so we're going to fill in the first employee that needs to be adjusted. And then we're going to come over to the check number. You need to fill something in here or Sage will think that you have checks that are waiting to be printed. So we're just going to put in a dummy check number. I usually do something like Sick Adjust 2018 something like that. And then for the date, um, you can use the last day of the old year or you could use the first day of the new year. Either one will work. Um, my only recommendation would be that if you happen to have a payroll that falls on either of those days, then you use the other date um, for your adjustment date. So if you have a December 31st payroll, then make your adjustment on January 1st rather than doing it on, on the same day as an actual payroll. Then we're going to come down, we're going to zero out the hours. If it was a salaried person, you zero out their salary. You're going to make sure that everything on this stub, except for the sick remaining, is zero. And since this employee, Polly, had 50 hours, we're going to put minus 10 here in the sick remaining field. Nothing else should be on here, just everything's zero. Unless you're also adjusting vacation. You could do both of those on the same uh, same check and it would work the same way if you're doing vacation you would just put the uh, the adjustment into the vacation remaining field so now we're going to double check we're going to go up here click on the down arrow by print and we'll hit print preview yes we want to continue and you can see that here the sick remaining in the year to date column is showing 40 and that's the number we wanted so we'll close that window and I'm going to save this. And you'll notice that the check number here counts up. So as long as you leave this window open, uh, you won't have to keep adjusting the check number. And then you'll just repeat that process for each employee uh, that you need to adjust. So now to uh, double check our balances, we can go back to our vacation and sick time report. And I'm going to run that to show totals only just to make the report shorter and now we can see that Polly is down to 40 hours
So that's all there is to it. Uh, just go through that process for each employee, and then um, you know, then you'll have the correct carry-forward balance uh, on your sick time or vacation time. Hope you find that useful.